I have a soft spot for the tools that help developers, for the tools that enable us to shift left. The more autonomous developers are, the more productive they are. And in that spirit, today, I would like to explore a tool that can help local development. To be more precise, it is a tool that can help us deploy our applications locally while developing. And the name of the tool is DevSpace by Loft. It allows us to effortlessly deploy our applications locally in a local Kubernetes cluster, reload or redeploy that application every time local source code changes, expose it in a way that it is easily accessible through browser or whatever you're using to access our application. And it can be used for quite a few other things which we are going to explore as well. Not all of those things are equally useful, but we are going to get there. For now, let's jump into a demo and see how DevSpace works. And after that, we are going to discuss what's good, what is bad about it, whether you should use it, whether you should not use it, and so on and so forth. I already created a Git repository with all the manifests and the code and everything we will need in this demo. And the gist with the reference to that repo and all the commands that I will run is in the description. Actually, the link to the gist is in the description. So go there and check it out if you want to follow along or reproduce what I'm doing. Given that everything is somehow related to Kubernetes these days, or at least majority of the things, I will need a local Kubernetes cluster. I will use K3D for that. If you're not familiar with it, the link to the video is above my head and also in the description, so check it out. You can accomplish the same thing with Docker Desktop or Minikube or Kind or even a real Kubernetes cluster. So what I'm going to show you can happen both locally or remotely. Whatever is the most comfortable way for you to run Kubernetes while developing is good. So let's take a look at what I have in that repository. Those are mostly the files of the application. I have Docker file on top of that and I have manifests of my application stored in customized directory. You will see later that DevSpace is not limited only to Docker file and it is not limited only to customize. It can use different combinations, but we are going to get there. For now, I will be using customize because simply I had to use something. By the way, if you're not familiar with customize, I recommend to at least try it out. The link to the video is above my head and in the description. I will not go into the details how manifests of my application are created. What really matters is that there is a directory customized slash overlay slash dev. That's where the manifest is stored or at least the variation of the manifest that I will use for development purposes. Now we need to answer a couple of questions so that DevSpace knows what exactly do we need. The first one is about the mechanism, how we want to deploy our application. And we can choose between Helm, Kubernetes or Customize. I will choose Customize simply because I already have customized definitions for my application. And also because I like Customize, but that would be a separate subject. Now we need to specify the path to the customized YAML file or the directory where customized YAML is located, and that will be customized slash overlay slash dev. Next, I need to specify the container image that is used in my manifest so that DevSpace knows how to use customize to modify the image depending on what is happening. Speaking of the image, it also needs to know how to build the image, whether it will be with Docker file or with something else. It could be Jib, Bazel, and a couple of others. I already have Docker files, so I will select the first option. Finally, I think that this is the last option. I need to specify the port through which my application running in my local Kubernetes cluster will be exposed. I will just go with the default 8080, but it could be anything, basically, whatever suits your needs. And that's about it. This project is now ready to be used through DevSpace. I can develop it locally. I can deploy it locally as well. I could deploy it in a remote cluster as well, but in this case, I have a local K3D cluster. However, before we proceed, let's take a quick look at devspace.yaml, which is a configuration file that was created through this process. Now, the output of that file might be overwhelming at the first look, and in majority of cases, we do not need to worry about it. Most of the information that it needs were provided during the initialization process through the questions that we answered. But if you need to customize how it behaves and do something extra that was not provided through the initial questions, this is the file that you would edit. And as you will see later, we will actually need to make a few modifications, but we'll get there. Actually, let's modify it right away because I already spotted one thing that should be different than it is. I will open it in Vim. You can use any editor you like. And let's see what is the thing I spotted. What is wrong with this file? 
if you go to spec, replace pods and replace image, we can see that it is using JavaScript. Normally, DevSpace will detect the language and use whichever language is appropriate for your project. But I intentionally used an application written in Hugo for two reasons. First, because I was too lazy to create a new one for this demo. Second, because Hugo is almost never detected by similar tools and I wanted to see how it behaves when there is something extraordinary. And that image is basically the image that will be used to create a container where the files will be synchronized and that will be used for local development. You will see it in action soon. In any case, I will replace it with Hugo image that I already have prepared and that's about it. Since I do not like doing anything in the default namespace, that's simply a bad thing to do even when using local clusters. Actually, when it's local, it shouldn't matter that much. Nevertheless, I do not like using the default namespace, so I will create the namespace dev. Next, I will tell my local cube config to use that specific namespace, the dev namespace. Then that's about it. Now I can start dev space and start developing. And all I have to do is execute the command dev space dev and then wait for a couple of moments. Now you can see an error. It is complaining that dev space underscore start dot sh cannot be found. That is the default name of the script that should be executed whenever we start our development environment. We're going to fix that soon. What matters is that we are now inside of a container deployed in our local Kubernetes cluster. Let's take a look at what's inside by listing all the files and directories in the current directory. What you see here are all the files that I have locally on my laptop. So it synchronized my local files into the container running as a pod, which was created through a replica set, which was created through a deployment and so on and so forth. It deployed whatever was defined in my application manifest, but instead of using the image that I would normally use in production, it replaced it with whatever I specified there with Hugo, and then it synchronized all the local files into that container. In other words, whatever I have on my laptop is now available inside of that container. Let's simulate development. Let's look at one of the files of that application, which is config tomos, a simple file that defines uh, most of the things for this demo application, which is a simple website. Now, copying files from my laptop inside of that container wouldn't be such a big deal if it's done once. But DevSpace is going beyond that. It is continuously synchronizing my local file system with the file system inside of that container. And I can prove that to you by opening a new terminal and then modifying that file. So on the left side is what is inside of the container and on the right side is what is in my file system. And I will modify something. Let's say that this part that says DevOps Toolkit series will now contain DevOps Toolkit series with uh, five exclamation marks. Remember, this right-hand terminal is what is happening on my local file system. Now let's output that same file inside of the container. And we can see that the moment I modified something on my file system, that was synchronized into that container. So the container and my file system have exactly the same files. They're always in sync. And that means that I could develop locally. Normally I would use VS Code or whichever ID you are using, develop, develop, develop. And you know that whichever changes you're making locally, they are reflected inside of the container. While inside that container, I should probably start the process, start my application, execute my application. And in this specific case, the execution is through Hugo server command, but normally it would be whatever you're using to run your application. Look what's happening. The moment I started the process, the moment I started the application, it detected that it is listening on a specific port. It mapped that port to 8080, and then it started a new tab in my browser. So since this application is a web-based application, front-end, it immediately opened the browser with the application. And you can see that the change that was created locally was synchronized inside of that container, and we can see it as the end result in the browser. Now, there is one more thing missing. It would be nice if I wouldn't need to execute commands like Hugo server or whatever is the command to start your application. And we can further customize what is happening when the container starts by modifying devspace underscore start dot sh script. Among other things, it is executing devspace list ports, which I don't need in this case. I will replace that command, which is not working anyways, with Hugo server command that I need for this specific application. Let's start the development environment again by executing devspace dev. 
We can see that this time the server started immediately because it was specified through the init script. The system is slightly cleverer now and it knows what to do. As a result, that browser tab that you saw before opened immediately because the initialization of the server, the starting of the server, is part of the init script. And you can see that the same change, you know, the exclamation marks are still there. I will leave that running and open another terminal in similar development. Normally I would use VS Code or whatever to modify my files, to write code or whatever I'm doing. So I'm developing now, I'm modifying files. In this case, I will simulate it by removing those exclamation marks. And that's it, I modified my local files and I'm not touching my dev environment. Dev space already synchronized the files and Hugo reloaded. And all I have to do is go back to browser and refresh it. And there you go, exclamation marks are gone. So what I'm doing here is running dev space dev in a background and just developing and knowing that everything that I need, at least the application itself, is always synchronized, it's always compiled, it is always running, and it is always reflecting the latest change I'm making to the source code. Now let's stop the development environment and see what else do we have with dev space. There are quite a few things, like we can release the mapping of the ports, we can see the profiles, like there is production profile. That means that we could use dev space to deploy to production or to staging or wherever we would like to deploy it, but I do not recommend that. Dev space is not a good tool to deploy to permanent environment, to staging, to production, what's or not. You should use Argo CD or Flux or some of the similar tools. So if you ask me, you should ignore dev space for anything that is not development environment. That's what it's good for. And that's what you should focus on and leave the rest of the options out. We also have a UI that we can start with DevSpace UI. And there's not much going on here. You can see logs, maybe this application doesn't have logs. You can see configurations and stuff like that. It's not something that is really very, very useful. It's simply there. What really matters is that you can initialize your project. You can use DevSpace Dev to start your development environment and you can modify the config file to suit your specific needs. The rest of the options or the features of DevSpace are not really something that I would recommend you to use. That does not mean that DevSpace is not a good tool. It's a fantastic tool, but it is a fantastic tool for development environments and not for whatever else it has. Finally, when you're finished developing, you can execute DevSpace purge, which will remove all the artifacts, all the resources that were deployed in your cluster. When you're using local clusters, I'm not sure that that's very useful because you can just destroy the cluster itself. But if you would be using real clusters, you know, GKE, AKS, EKS, whatever you're using, then purging is very useful. And that is DevSpace. It's a simple tool that does something and does it really well. It's a really good tool for local development environment. It's in a way similar to Scaffold or Gitpod. Uh, it has different strengths and weaknesses. I'm trying not to do a comparison here. If you want me, I can compare DevSpace with other similar tools. In isolation, it's a pretty good one. And I like that it is very focused. It does one thing and does it well. Actually, it does a few other things which I don't care about. But if you're focused only on the development environment type of features, it's really amazing. It's a great small tool. I like tools that are small and do something and do something well. And DevSpace is one of those and it comes from Loft and Loft is a company that has some amazing tools. I already explored vCluster. Watch it. The video is above my head probably and in the description. Now when I think about it, I think I should combine vCluster with DevSpace and a few other tools and do the whole life cycle of an application from local development to pull requests or preview environments to production. That might be interesting. I should probably combine those two with Argo CD or Flux and maybe a few other tools and try to do the whole life cycle of an application. Yeah, now when I think about it, that would be a cool thing to do, probably full life cycle using quite a few other tools. Anyways, let me know in the comments if that's something that you would be interested in and I will create a video around that topic.